Classic Music, Bruce Springsteen. Our new series, America the Beautiful, don't you like the sound of that? Celebrates 100 years of the National Park Service. One of its many protected animals, the bison, was recently designated by Congress as the nation's first official mammal. Not long ago, the iconic symbol of the American frontier nearly disappeared from the landscape. Mark Strassman went to Yellowstone National Park to see the remarkable comeback story of one truly wild herd. Few places make you feel in this world like Yellowstone. Its timelessness spreads to the horizon. Here is where the bear and the antelope play, but the bison dominates. You're looking at what may be the last free-ranging purebred herd of wild bison in North America. You look at the valley full of bison. It's, uh, it's primitive America. It's probably as close as you can get to what this part of the country looked like in the early 1700s and the 1800s. And, and it's really, uh, it's a treasure. Dan Wank is the superintendent at Yellowstone National Park. Bison roam its 2.2 million acres, an area nearly as big as Rhode Island and Delaware combined. But little about scale impresses America's largest land animal. A mature bison bull stands six feet tall and can weigh more than a ton. That's formidable. There's not many uh, fullbacks who would like to approach that line. <laughs> so imposing, and yet they almost disappeared. How dire did it get? Well, in Yellowstone National Park, there were less than 25 animals. It is one of the greatest wildlife conservation stories in the history of the United States. Here's why this conservation comeback is so remarkable. In the 1800s, as many as 60 million bison were hunted nearly into extinction. 60 million. They were targets in the ugly side of how the West was won. The American bison, the symbol of the Great Plains, once roamed from Nevada to Mississippi. But in the 1800s, pioneers pushed west. Bison were in the way. Tens of millions were killed by cattle ranchers, homesteaders, and U.S. troops. Sport hunters shot bison from moving trains. As the animals disappeared, so did the Native American tribes who for centuries had relied on bison for food, clothing, shelter, and tools. We don't call them bison, we call them buffalo. Because? We think of as, as bison as, as a white man term. Montana rancher Irvin Carlson belongs to the Blackfeet tribe. He's also president of the Intertribal Buffalo Council, representing 60 tribes who believe bison also have great spiritual significance. Buffalo were everything to tribes. We survived on them. They took care of us. What was the great buffalo slaughter really all about to you? If you got rid of the buffalo, then consequently you would get rid of the Indian. By 1883, nearly all bison were gone. Congress even sent soldiers to Yellowstone to protect the final survivors from poachers. Conservationists, including President Teddy Roosevelt, intervened to protect and restore the population. Roughly 5,000 bison live at Yellowstone today. This comeback story, how improbable was it? It was really the first effort to restore what could have been an endangered species. Rick Wallen, the park's chief bison biologist, oversees a unique herd. You can't see this kind of abundance anywhere else. Most of America's roughly half million bison today are managed as domestic livestock. Many have crossbred with cattle, not Yellowstone's herd. Yellowstone bison probably represent one of the only populations that truly have all of the kind of ecological and evolutionary drivers that shape the species. This is as good as it gets. This is also the herd's calving season, which brings us to Yellowstone's current bison challenge and controversy, managing the herd's growth. When the bison migrate outside the park, neighboring ranchers have killed them. They say they're worried the animals will spread brucellosis, a disease harmful to pregnant cattle. Inside the park has grazing limits. Under a federal state agreement, every year the herd has to be reduced by about 10%. Several hundred get sent for processing to tribes which distribute the hides and meat. When you see these guys, it make you feel good? It does. But the current it's, approach seems to satisfy no one, including Irvin Carlson, who also belongs to the Bison Management Coalition. 
He says these animals should roam free inside and outside the park or be returned to what he calls Indian country. They're wildlife. They belong on the land. Um, they belong to the land. They're part of the land. They're also part of Yellowstone's future. I think there is a middle ground. We can get more bison on the landscape. We can diminish to, to eliminate the fear of the spread of the disease, and we can honor the cultural significance of bison for the Native American community. Think of it as a way of making peace with the past for an American icon. For CBS This Morning, Mark Strassman at Yellowstone National Park. I'm on the bison Beautiful. side. Me yeah. too. I'm with Irv Carlson. <laughs> yeah. Let the buffalo roam. Yeah. Beautifully done. Beautiful. Beautiful. Majestic Peace. animals.